Hey guys, it's Roberto, one half of Not So Instant Coffee. While my wife is at work, we're gonna try to turn our IKEA workbench into a legit coffee cart. So the first couple steps are gonna be to cover up the front and the sides with some plywood from Home Depot. So this is an actual plywood. This is what you would call underlayment. It's only five millimeters thick. So it's thin enough and light enough so the cart won't be super heavy. Do next is you're gonna flip the bottom part which will add another two inches to the space from this top part to the bottom part that's essential because we're gonna be putting a lot of stuff underneath here like uh, water gallons and water pumps so you need as much space as possible next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off these bolts right here because they're protruding so when you lay your underlayment it won't be flush so it won't be perfect, but at least taking these off and putting them on top of the underlayment will help make the whole thing look a little bit cleaner. Okay, next what I would do is measure out an extra five millimeters. So that way when you put the side plank, the front of the cart will cover up the sides and hopefully that makes it a little cleaner. And Hopefully the Home Depot cut a good 90 degree angle because I don't have a table saw. So we'll try our best with straight angles. Okay, so I didn't do the best job, obviously. Um, and all the edges are pretty ugly and pretty frayed. Um, that's because my circular saw, the teeth are way too big. Um, so what's gonna happen is hopefully with this Hobby board will end up creating a border right here and hopefully that covers up any imperfections. Alright, we cut a piece of scrap wood here, line it up, very nice. Okay, so this is why I don't like it when people call these projects DIY projects uh, because yes you can do it yourself but it requires a lot of specialized tools. Uh, that maybe you don't already have so it ends up costing about the same if you go out and buy every piece of equipment like if you didn't have a skill saw if you didn't have a drill um, and right here what's gonna happen is we're gonna put the bolts back right here but they're gonna stick out so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this 5 8 drill bit and we're gonna just make a, an incision so it's a recessed and that way when we put this in it'll be more uh, it'll be flush that way it it's not in the way when we put our border so I drilled from behind the board but I forgot that when you do that it like totally destroys the other side but it's okay like I said we're gonna put that border here it's grabbing enough thread to hold on to it and hold the frame together it's not pretty, but it's not that bad. Honestly, this is really just to make sure that the frame gets held down the way it was meant. What you can also do is get one of these bigger drill bits, make sure that the head is about the same size, and just make a little bit of a starting point, just deep enough for the head to be recessed, and that should hide the rest of the screw. Just make sure you use some of this self-drilling uh, screws. This one uh, is meant to go through uh, sheet metal. So adding the extra five millimeters worked out for the most part. Once this gets bolted down, this should look better. So the only thing I don't like is that because of this connection right here, it doesn't look very nice. All right guys, it's a couple days later. So we finished putting the sides in the front. Now what we're gonna try to do is put on some caster wheels. So obviously we have to put something here, otherwise the caster wheel won't be able to turn. So we get a two by four. Um, this distance is about, well I counted, um, 
I measure 21 and 3 eighths. So if we put the caster wheels on this, uh, it'll probably work out. So we're gonna drill some holes. We have these bolts. So when you go out to find this, these are called carriage bolts. Um, make sure you get a washer and a lock washer because there will be a lot of vibrating from, you know, moving around the cart. So the lock washer makes sure that, you know, the, the nut doesn't come loose. Um, the reason I got the carriage bolt was because of this square um, head inside. It actually fits perfectly in here. So when you put this in, it locks. So that way we can uh, fasten it easier. So we got three inch carriage bolts. So remember there's, there's nothing here. It's, it's very thin. So this is more than enough to be able to go through. Okay, so these carriage bolts were 5 sixteenths and 3 inches long, so you use a 5 sixteenths drill bit, make the holes. Um, make sure you have the drill bit that can go to metal, and it looks cool. Alright, looking good. Okay, just finished making the frame. Um, I tried using the miter box, but honestly, I used the miter saw instead. The miter box was giving me crooked edges just because I'm not really good at using it. Okay, this is what it looks like. So after you cut all your pieces to 45 degree angles, uh, you're gonna use liquid nails just to stick it on. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, so what you're going to need is you're actually going to need some clamps to clamp them down whenever you're gluing anything down. So I don't have clamps. So what I did was I basically, every time I put something, glued something uh, on, I would just lay it flat on the floor and use the weight of a cart in order to, um, push down the, the border. So I think it came out pretty good. So, if you want to see what happens if you don't, on this side, I didn't. I, I got pretty tired. I went to sleep. So, this side just stayed. Um, I never let, uh, laid it on its side. I didn't use any clamps. And it lifted. And it's not the prettiest. So, I'm okay with it. So, that's... Just so you can see what happens when you don't clamp it down, it will actually lift up. So, yeah, I think for a DIY project, it came out pretty, pretty well. The only thing I would change is that I don't like seeing the side piece from the front. So maybe we could have extended this just a little bit more and pushed this one back. So that way you wouldn't be able to see this from the front. That's the only thing I would change. Okay, so it's time to paint. Uh, so we chose a stain and poly combination. Um, it's gonna come out looking like this. The picture actually shows a much lighter color, um, but um, it just depends on what kind of wood you use, I suppose. This is honey, uh, stain and poly from Bear. And the sunlight, Looks all right. A little darker than advertised, but we like it. The only thing you gotta watch out for is that you do not want to paint this with a stain and poly because it's not food grade. This, if you use uh, use it bare, you're gonna want to use uh, food grade uh, mineral oil to help penetrate and to help make this a little bit waterproof. Uh, but don't paint this because um, it'll get into your food and um, if you're going to be doing any type of food prep on this um, whatever covering you use has to be food grade 
So you're gonna wanna work pretty fast and spread it out evenly, or else you're gonna get stained like this. You can try to like smooth it out, but because it was penetrated there for a while, it's gonna, it's gonna stay. So you're gonna wanna work pretty fast. Wanna, wanna go over it a couple times. Over here, it's uh, you see these little spots where like it stayed too long. You can try to like move it out, but then if you go back into it, you're just gonna end up putting more paint there. It's gonna look worse. But with the grain on this one, it's gonna be kind of hard because the grain's going this way and it's going down, so it's gonna be a little difficult. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's done. So. This is why they tell you not to paint in direct sunlight. As you can see, a lot of the spots, um, they look darker than others just because it dried out way too quickly. Um, but that's okay, I'm, I'm happy with what we got. You know, for a DIY project, it's not that bad. Plus, we're gonna pop up right now, like in maybe a couple hours. So, the sooner it dries, the better for me, I guess. So yeah, it's very spotty. Um, it's not my best work, but uh, you know, I'm happy with what we got. All right guys, thanks for watching. Sorry for recording this in portrait mode. I really thought this was gonna be a small reel for Instagram, but it turned out to be like a 12 minute long YouTube video. So if you guys have any questions on any specific things we did or used to make the coffee cart uh please let us know we'll be happy to answer any questions in the comments um but honestly i wouldn't really call it a coffee cart until it has the water pumps the flow jet you know all the stuff it needs for the espresso machine so you could really use this for anything um so if you guys have any ideas what i could have done better uh just you know put it in the comments and maybe we can make uh, this cart just a little better uh for next time i'll make sure to post an update once we get all the water pumps and the special machine and even our logo on there um, later on so thanks for watching and see you guys soon